the second episode of this series today, we're gonna continue to create our game, and this time we're gonna code the player movement, and we're also gonna call the animation that we have created in the previous video, and we're gonna call them through cause our player is animated, and he can move to the right, to the left, be flipped, and we're also gonna add the gravity. Uh, this video is part of my new series, the 20 Metroidvania series uh, for God of War 2. We're gonna have around like 15 to 20 uh, video of that uh, very series. The asset is available in the description, and uh, you can also find in the description the link for my uh, my game Lone Knight that you can wishlist on Steam at the moment, which is a 2D Metroidvania that should be released normally this year this time. And uh, you can also find my latest course where I am making a 2D RPG with a crafting system, an inventory, and a dialogue manager. And also in that same course, I am making as well an introduction to 3D in Godot 4. So without further ado, let's get started. So now we're going to code the player movement and for that we need to attach a script to our player. So I click on my player here and I'm going to click on that icon right there and I'm going to attach a script to my player. So I'm going to uh, name it player, that's fine. I'm going to click here on that icon and I just want to create a folder for that uh, for my script. So I go back to my rest folder by clicking on that little icon right there and then here I'm going to click on create folder and I'm going to call that folder script and inside that folder I'm going to create another folder and here I'm going to save my player uh, script right there because maybe you want to have like different type of script that are related to the player so it's easier for you to find after that so I'm going to click on open it's going to be uh, inheriting a character body 2D which is the class that we are using for our node and uh, here on top plate I am on node default you, you will be you will be probably on character to body 2D basic movement but get on this one because we're going to code our code uh, our movement ourselves so I'm going to click here on create and so now I'm arriving on the script tab of Godot uh, so here what I want to do is I want basically any, any movement are related to like two things getting the input and getting a direction so the first thing i want to do is i want to create a variable for that in godot you just tap var and here i'm gonna uh, name that variable input that's it then after that what i want to do is i want to create a variable that i'm gonna call speed and that variable i'm gonna set it to be equal to 100.0 uh, here I'm gonna put a float uh, for some reason that I will explain a little bit later then with that done we need to have a, a, a variable for the gravity and that variable gravity gonna be at 10 and this one is not a float this one is an integer I also will explain why uh, the thing that we can do is like instead of, of having those uh, variable speed that are hard coded which means that we can change them only in, in, uh, in the code we can create them as an export so for example right now if I click on my player you can see here nothing shows but if I for example put my speed and my gravity as an export variable it's gonna show up in the inspector right there so I'm gonna just for that tap at export and then make a space and you're gonna see that it's gonna export now my speed variable into my inspector which is very useful i can just copy that and i can put it here and so now my gravity gonna also shows up right there voila so now we can modify those values directly into the into uh, the godot uh, scene inspector that's way better this way so now what I would like to do is I would like to create my function so that handle the movement. So for that, I'm going to go under my process uh, delta function and I'm going to click here uh, and I'm going to uh, tap func movement and I'm going to pass delta as a parameter between parentheses because I'm going to use the delta to contain the speed of my movement. So here, what I want to do is I want to get uh, an access to my input and I want to uh, to uh, define what my inputs are so here i'm going i'm going to go here and i'm going to say input is equal to input dot get underscore action and here we're going to get get action strength and so uh, there's an order for that to follow which for me is going to be ui right so ui right like this and then we're gonna um subtract the uh input left so like this we can't uh, press those two uh, those two values at the same times so here i'm gonna just copy that and i'm gonna put ui left so now godot knows that my variable input here is actually containing my input so if i press on the right arrow key uh, like it will uh, recognize it and if i press on the left arrow key it will recognize it as well so now that i have that what i can do is i can make a check to see if i'm pressing one of those inputs so for that i can say if input 
is not equal to zero exclamation mark here means not in programming then here i can check uh, what uh, is going on and um, this is where i need to have access to the second parameter of my uh, of my movement which is my direction i need to check in which direction i'm going am i going to the right am i going to the left so for that here i'm gonna make uh, i'm gonna make a nest <laughs> if statement in that so i'm gonna say if input is greater than zero then here what i want to say is i want to say that my velocity dot x velocity here is not defined in our script but directly into the character body to the class of our script so that's why i can type it here uh, so velocity dot x here is going to be plus equal or speed time the delta and then what we want to do is uh, we want to basically do the same thing but for when our input are in negative so here i'm copy that and instead of uh, greater i'm gonna put smaller and here instead of the plus i'm gonna put uh, minus because if you're new to programming when we are going in positive on the x-axis we are going to the right and when we are going in negative on the x-axis we are going to the left uh, now that we have done that we also need to have a check for when we are not moving so here what i can do is like i can uh, get out of that if statement range here and i can go on this one there and here what i can do is i can say if input is double equal to zero so it means that here we are not pressing any key then I can say velocity.x is equal to zero. And then I can call another, uh, another function that is very important. If you don't do that, the, the code will not work. Uh, here I can uh, call move and slide. Move and slide is a built in function inside Godot that is in charge of moving our uh, player or function that call that uh, specific built in function. So now in my process, process is uh, use 60 frames per second so i can uh, just put my movement delta i can copy that here and i can pass that into my uh, function process delta so now i can save and i can create a scene so for example i'm going to go here i'm going to click on the plus i'm going to create a 2d scene i'm going to create a new scene i'm going to call it level underscore one and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh, load my player so for that i'm going to click here on the chain icon i'm going to look for my player scene which is the, the the first one that we have we can go now to our uh, where our level is and what i can do is that i can move my player for example like this something like this and so now uh, i'm going to be in need of one thing which is i need to have a camera because right now we can save the scene i can go back to to I can go back a bit i can go to my scene folder uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually create a new folder that I'm going to call levels. It's going to be way better. And I'm going to save my scene here. Now I can launch my scene. So for that, I click on that button and I click on select current. And I'm going to see my player here. It should be animated normally, but you can see it's, it appears very, very small. So here, what we can do is we can, for example, create a camera. So on my level, I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to look for a camera 2D and now i can adjust the zoom of that camera to the you can see if i unzoom we have that sort of like purplish rectangle that is showing this is like show what the camera is showing so here what i can do is like that zoom i can uh, just put it at three i'm gonna shrink uh the, the the camera and i can move my player i can move it for example right here and because i have no gravity on at the moment my player is just gonna show there and i'm gonna be able to move it like this and you can see that it moves it's perfect there's one thing that is missing is like uh for example i can't i, I haven't clamped my um, my player movement so i have uh, he, he appears to be sliding like this and that's not something that i want so here what i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna go back to my script and i'm gonna add into our if uh, our velocity.x i'm gonna clamp our velocity so for that i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna say something like velocity.x is equal to clamp and so here i want to clamp my speed so i'm going to come here speed here i'm going to put another value so for now my speed is what my speed here is 100 uh so that's okay so i can for but i can clamp my i can clamp my speed with like for example 100 like this for now and like this for now and i need for the uh, other check in negative i need to also copy my clamp here but here i need to put minus speed and then here i need to put minus speed so now my speed is going to be clamped. Voila. And now I have the full control of my, of my player. So that's cool. So now we need to uh, 
uh, flip or sprite. So for that, what we can do is there's two ways. I'm going to show you the two ways. So I'm going to go back on my player scene. I'm just going to go back of the dead animation and I'm going to come on like the idle one. And so on uh, sprite 2D, uh, here what you can do is like, for example, you could go on offset and here you have flip H and you can call that uh, that function here. That will work, that will work completely fine. And you can see that if you hover, you have property flip H. And so basically in the code, it translates like this. I can come here and I can do dollar sign, which is the way in Godot that we are using as a shortcut to access a node somewhere. I can dollar sign sprite 2D dot, and then I can do flip underscore H uh, is equal to false because here we are to the right and our uh, sprite is made to be um, to the right per default. But here, when we are going to the left, I can say true. And so this will work. I'm going to show you. I'm going to launch, I'm launching, I'm launching the game. I come here to the right, that's all right. And here I'm going to the left and that also flip my player. Okay, perfect. But there's a better way to do that because in the future, we're going to probably have some other uh, element. And what you can do is instead of doing flip H, you can do scale dot X. And here, instead of false, we're going to put one. And so here I'm going to also put scale dot X. And here I'm going to put it uh, minus one. And you're going to see that it has the same, uh, it's going to have the same effect. So I come here like this. And if I flip, it scale everything. But what this does is that it take our sprite 2D and it scale everything to the, uh, to the right. And you can have a more, uh, you can have like a, a a better control of everything that you want to do with your sprite. Maybe at some point you want to change the scale of it. Maybe you want to have like uh, you make so you want to make some effect with your with the scale of your player. For example, if I go back to my sprite 2D, I go to my transform. My scale is right here, and per default uh, in Godot it is changed, so you can unlock that. And so, for example, here my scale is one, and if I put on minus one. It flip it. Okay, perfect. That's just what we have done through code. Perfect. But maybe sometime you want to flip only the uh, Y axis because maybe you want to make your uh, player work on the ceiling. And so if you do that, you can modify that. And now you have the uh, sprite 2D that is like going backward like this and the movement will go like this. If I launch my game like that, you're going to see that now my player is like this. And maybe that's something that you want to toggle in the future for your game. You maybe want uh, have to have a level where like the player uh, is forced to move on the ceiling, for example. So that's why I'm doing it this way, because it gives you way more control in the future. So now we have done the player movement. We have done uh, the flipping aspect, but we need still to call the animation. So for that, it's very simple. We already have our animation that are uh, created. That's what we have done in the last video. So here, uh, in our input, if not input is not equal to zero, here we can just call our animation. So I can just call dollar sprite. I can come here and look for my anim uh, node. Remember that my animation player in the first video I renamed it anim. And so here I can do anim dot play, and here I can look for my uh, work. And so I can copy that. I can put it here. And then here, when we are not moving in our input equals zero, then I can also call my anim, anim.play, and here I can look for my idle animation. So if I, if I launch the game now, now my player is animated, and he can go to the left, to the right. Perfect. There's one thing that is missing, which is that we need to have our player uh, colliding with something. So for that, we're going to go back to the level one, I'm going to click on 2D and here on level one, I'm going to create a new node and that node is going to be a static body. Uh, we're going to do something way better in the future because we're going to create like a background with like a time map, auto tile and stuff like this. But this is just for like showing you how the gravity works. So here, the static body 2D, I'm going to rename it temporary ground like this. And I'm going to attach a sprite 2D and I'm going to attach a collision shape. Collision shape like this. And that collision shape gonna be a rectangle per default. Uh, the sprite 2D, I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna go to my environment, and I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna go here for my 2D Metroidvania series. So I'm gonna click and drag it in empty, and here you have all the sprites that we're gonna use uh, in a future video for creating our background. What I'm gonna do here is I just want to have a region of it, and so for that, I on sprite 2D selected, I can go to region here. I can click on enable, which is gonna make disappear my sprite. Like that here. And then here I can go to edit region 
and then here I can pick the region that I want. So me, I just want to select that region right here. So I'm going to go here to uh, none and I'm going to go uh, and I'm going to toggle the pixel snap and I'm going to zoom with my mouse wheel and I'm just going to select that here and I'm going to click on close and now I have this that shows. I can go to my collision shape and I can just like drag my collision shape so it match the shape of my sprite 2D. So I can come here, I can do something like this. Voila. And so now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to click on level 1 and I'm going to click on plus. I'm going to look for a node 2D. Remember that this is like just a temporary step. Uh, it's just not to spend like um, um, what I'm going to do. Like I'm going to rename it ground. Voila. Uh, I'm just doing that for not spending like uh, 15 minutes to like uh, set up a, <laughs> an auto tire or something like this. So I'm just going to go here to ground. I put my temporary ground inside my node ground. So like this, I can just like close it nicely. And now I'm with temporary ground selected, what I'm going to do is like I'm just going to rename it actually one. And then I'm going to do control D and I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to move it with the move tool. Something like this for now. I'm just going to do that. It's going to be way more than enough for what I need to do. So voila, I'm going to just duplicate it like this, just like that. And I'm just going to take my player, I'm going to put it here for a moment. And so now what I want to do is I want just to uh, toggle the gravity of my player. So for that, I need to go back to my script. And here I could put something like this. I could put, for example, velocity.y plus equal or gravity. And that will work. So here, for example, I can save and I can launch my game. And you can see that now my player is falling. So that's cool. And if I go out of my uh, platform, it's going to fall. Perfect. But maybe in the future, you want to have a uh, different type of gravity inside your game. So if you use that method, you're going to be in need to make uh, a lot of if statements and stuff like that, which is not automatically ideal. So instead of using that, what you can do is like you can create a function that I'm going to call gravity underscore force. And here I'm gonna uh, just take that. I'm gonna maintain Alt and I'm gonna um, the Alt key and I'm gonna just click on my uh, down arrow key to move that code here. And now instead of uh, my gravity here, here before move and slide, I can just call gravity underscore force, and then I will work the same. And now we have our gravity that works and that's cool. So now what we can do is we can, in the next video, we're going to set up the jump uh, and we're also going to set up in further video the swirl and we're going to set up the background finally so we have something that looks a little bit better than this. So I will see you in the next video. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.